Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're digging into some beginner kelp waster and how kelp reactors work. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So if you guys were watching my stream last week, Than and I from Tile Gardens, we got dug into the rabbit hole of kelp waster. We are talking about kelp reactors and I was requested to make a video explaining kind of how they work and there's also a ton of comments asking me to do more of a beginner explanation of kelp waster and how it works and more of a beginner level. So today we're going to dig into it. So kelp waster or calcium hydroxide is a one part additive to the tank. Now it's going to dose alkalinity and calcium to your system. So that's one really nice thing. So you can dose it with a single pump, which is really nice. You don't need a pump at all. And again, we'll go into the different methods. Now the, I'm going to say the more old school common way of doing it was to put it in your auto top off container. Now with kelp waster, you get your maximum potency or the max you can dissolve maximum concentration is one teaspoon per gallon or two teaspoons per gallon of water. So every gallon, take two level teaspoons, put it in. That's kind of your max concentration. So if you have like a five gallon ATO, for instance, you could theoretically put in 10 teaspoons. That's going to be your max dose. Now I am not a fan of dosing with an ATO for many reasons as it's not consistent. If you know, it's really hot or really dry, you know, maybe you're evaporation changes it's going to change your dosing on you maybe you break off a coral and sell it or something and scoop a bunch of water also your ato kicks on you're dosing a bunch of your tank so it's not consistent that's why i don't like it um if you want the next kind of simplest way to do it would be take a one gallon or a five gallon container you can mix up to max satin saturation and use something like a dosing pump now i use an ecotech versa going through a calc reactor on mine but you could use a dosing pump to suck from your concentration and just drip it into your tank at a controlled rate. And that is hands down better than using an ATO in my opinion. Now, if you want to do it super duper budget, you could set up just like a little airline valve in a dripper and drip it to your tank. You don't even need a dosing pump. However, that's the route I would go is definitely use a dosing pump because it's going to be much more consistent, accurate and reliable. Now, if you are dosing it, so if you have the space, um, you have lots of space on your stand, you have a fish room, you have a garage or a little sump, any situations. You can mix up a five gallon bucket of calc. At max saturation, you could mix up, you know, like a brute container, you can do a big drum. Any of these methods. And this is going to be by far your cheapest method is to pre-mix it up and dose it with the dosing pump. To your tank, at a set amount, you need a little more elk and calcium, up your dosage a bit, and you have too much, lower it a bit. Now, why do we want to use calc in the first place? So one, it's pretty dang affordable compared to every other dosing method. Um, two, the reason that most people do it is for the pH benefit. So it is going to boost up the pH in your tank, which is a huge benefit. And that's why most people love it because healthier corals, better growth, win-win all around. Now the part that does this is because calcwasser is calcium hydroxide and the hydroxides are what bond to the carbonic acid and kind of help pull suck it out of the water, which in the hydro... The carbonic acid is basically what's lowering your pH. So by removing that, your pH is going to raise up. Now, if you dose too much to your tank and you know your pH skyrocketed, same thing. You could dose an acid to your tank, like a vinegar, and it's going to drop your pH back down. So something again. Now, back to the basics. The super simplest way: mix up a pre a volume, a five-gallon bucket, a brute, whatever it is. Use a dosing pump, dose it to your tank. By far the cheapest. Now, if you are limited on space, this is where calc reactors come in. Now, calc reactors are very simple. Now, the calc reactors are actually very simple. Um, this is a space saving design. There, there's a cylinder in the bottom. You can see there is calc in the bottom. You can see it slowly moving. So there is a motor in here. There's a big rod going down and a little paddle and it's constantly mixing it. Now, if we look here at the top, there's this little hose going in and this it comes from a dosing pump that's pulling from my RODI reservoir and it goes all the way to the bottom. So what I'm doing is basically taking the water that I normally use for auto top off, but I'm using it through a pump and it's pushing it all the way to the bottom of the reactor. And that fresh water is being mixed in with the chamber and all the calc and is being fully saturated or pretty dang close. And by the time it gets to the top of here, it, the water overflows out and drips into my sump. So super duper simple is basically a way to let you have a big container of calc in a lot less space and it drips right over top of here now i do have a power head in here um, and the power head does add a bunch of flow which helps it dissolve faster into the tank 
Now there's also another method called calc slurry, and this one's a little more advanced I'd say, but essentially don't do this unless you're really trying to push the limits and really trying to push the level. But on a normal calcium system, you're dosing the clear above all the haziness down here. In a calc slurry, you're dosing the haziness. So you're dosing the milky-like substance. Now, if you're dosing the milky-like substance, you're using your tank to dissolve the rest of it. And if you do do that method, then you 100% want a power head because you need it to dissolve in your tank. You don't want it to be like pure, just added to it. And to come over here, I have a bunch of dosing pumps. So I use one of these, which is a Versa. This one's for my cal calcium reactor, but I do have one down below that pushes water up from the floor below all the way up to the calc reactor, and that allows me to give it a very consistent dose. I dose about 6,000 mils a day, and it just does it very consistently. It's a very slow concentrate. Well, that's kind of the overview of all the different methods of calc. Now, if you do want to do the slurry row, um, the slurry is basically just dosing that milky, powdery liquid to the tank. Now, my thoughts on that one, yes, you can get a much higher pH boost out of it, but if you are doing that, you definitely want a power head in your sump. You want to dose a very high flow area because you're using your tank to finish dissolving it. Uh, my other thought with it too, is if you do do that method, it is a good idea to do water changes once in a while because where normal dosing calc, if there is impurities, it's definitely going to settle out at the bottom. If you're dosing a slurry, you're also dosing those impurities. So short term, probably not an issue, but if you never do a water change after a year down the road, maybe two years down the road, I feel like there's a lot of potential of some nasties to build up. So I would only do that method if you are heavy on the water changes. Again, that's more of an advanced method. So if you're starting out, forget I said any of that. So bare bone basics, take a container, two teaspoons per gallon. You can either drip it in manually or you can use a dosing pump, which would be my preferred method. If you are low on tight on space, calc reactor is your way to go. Now, what are the limitations of calc? Now you can only dose as much as your tank evaporates. And that's probably, I'm gonna say the biggest thing. And it can take you pretty dang far. But like on my tank, I have a ton of coral and calc alone can't keep up. So I'll use a calcium reactor on top of that and I do dosing. But for if you're starting out, you know, at your year one and a half, you, maybe two years in your tank, you might just be able to do 100% everything with calc. Instead of dosing calcium and egg, you know, multiple pumps, you got one pump, super simple, you get the pH boost. So there's a lot of pluses to it. But again, there's going to be a limit where you can only dose so much and then you might have to look at a, a different solution on top of that. Now there is supposedly a way where you can add some vinegar to it to up the concentration, but that's not something that I've tried. Uh, Randy Holmes Farley has done a good article on that one, so if you do want to look at that route, definitely check that one out. Alright guys, hopefully this answered a lot of your questions on kelk. If there's anything else that you have to add or anything I missed, let me know in the comments below. If there's something else you want me to dig into further or explain, I can do that in a future live stream. So let me know in the comments below. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, as always, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next video.